I always describe uh, my profession as uh, that I'm an artist, an artist working in public space. When I first came here, we were looking at the area and I thought, I don't want to do a temporary project here. I really want to create a more permanent project around housing. I think at this moment in time, housing in general is one of the battlefields of our time. I mean, it's really a battlefield, the right to, to a decent living. Enfield has been undergoing a major regeneration scheme over the last 10 years. The idea was to demolish most of the classical two up to downs, uh, the terrace houses as, as they're called, and to replace them by new build and also demolish the existing buildings in order to create a new street. What happened like two years ago through the economy crisis, the housing market renewal really stopped, it failed, so the money ran out. So the whole scheme of all the new build and all of the delivery of the promised regeneration is not going to happen. It's a story of corporate abuse assisted by local political corruption. Basically what you have is a football club here founded in 1892. You get people from all over the planet coming to see them. That means they need land and strategically they have destabilized this area. So my gran bought the house in 1920 and then when my nan died, the house came to my mum, and now it's come to me. Year by year, the area has just literally died bit by bit. Hopefully it will become an area where people will want to come and it will, it will grow again. And this is partly what the bakery means to me. We are in uh, what people know as the former uh, Mitchell's Bakery. What we have been doing is that we set up a land trust. At the moment the land trust will own the bakery and the bakery building and first the two adjacent houses and then later it will uh, also go and look for other properties in the, in the area. The way things work in terms of building around here is you get kicked out of your home and then if you're lucky enough to have the money you can move back to a house that's been designed by somebody for a profit here at the bakery, we literally, every single person sat around and designed what's happening. The plan for the two houses and the bakery together is that the bakery will have the shop, then it will have the bakery kitchen, it will have a community space for training, but also for communal gathering. On top of it, it will have a flat for young people, then also just a more smaller flat for a young adult, and then there will be a family home. So these are different typologies of which the community thought that would be needed in the area. A part of the project is also what we call home-baked, and that is a community bakery, which will start not only baking bread in the community, but also has a shop uh, where, uh, where you can buy affordable food. Out the front is the main shop area, which we're going to have seat in, and then back here, we're going to be having fresh bread made every single day, fresh sandwiches and fresh pastries and things like that. My work has been about trying to find ways in which people can reconnect to their daily environment. It's of crucial importance for people to have the possibility to reimagine the place where they are, to see themselves as part of the image created about the future. You feel that a lot of people in our contemporary society feel left out. They no longer think or even can imagine the fact that they can have a say in, in the future development of their area. And I think that's not true. I think it is still possible to take matters in your own hand and to change the direction of your own future. 
What is very important is that the physical development of that area is not just building a set of new houses, but it's actually also building social relationships. So here we say brick by brick, uh, loaf by loaf, we build ourselves. The right to live well is something you can still demand.